And what we typically see is financials too good. Three years later, and you can literally set your watch to it. Three years later, that advisor's itching to get out of the firm. And so this conversation today with you and I is really to help advisors, I think, to really understand when is a deal a deal and when is a loan a loan. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for joining the podcast today. Uh, you have Corey Whalen, Managing Partner, Bridgemark Strategies uh, on the line, and Jeff Nash, uh, CEO of Bridgemark Strategies on the line today. And today, what we're talking about are the economics that are being offered out there in the industry. And if, in fact, if the offers that you're taking a look at are a deal or a loan. And what I mean by a deal or a loan is a deal is, you know, significant amount of upfront money um, for you to move over to a firm, or is it a loan that where you're taking economics and it's going to negatively impact your long-term economics down the road? Um, we've been discussing economics on our last couple podcasts. Um, they've been higher than ever before. And while that's a humongous blessing and has helped financial advisors that maybe otherwise wouldn't have transitioned, have the capital to be able to do so. In our opinion, working with clients, some of these large upfront economic deals have caused financial advisors to ignore red alerts at firms that they're exploring and basically join firms that maybe they wouldn't have joined in the first place. You know, if I play off of that, Corey, you know, before we even get into the nitty gritty on it, um, you know, there's an expression that you and I talk about every single day, right? And, and it, when it, helping advisors evaluate and properly contextualize the evaluation process for advisors. And we talk about feel, fit, and financials. And feel is really about alignment. Fit, you know, it's, it's, it's making sure you're philosophically and culturally aligned with the firm. Fit is really about the business and make sure your business lines up with the firm and what they're able to, to kind of handle is, is what your business mix looks like and your needs. Uh, and then, of course, the financials are what they are. And, you know, I've been doing this now for, you know, nearly 25 years. And one thing that I've consistently learned is advisors that, are, that don't spend enough time digging into the feel and the fit and only focus on the financials. And when the financials can be too good, they can blind advisors on feel and fit. And that blinding on the fit really can stem from, can, can lead to a bad decision. Uh, sure. And what we typically see is financials too good. Three years later, and you can literally set your watch to it. Three years later, that advisor's itching to get out of the firm. Uh, and so this conversation today with you and I is really to help advisors, I think, to really understand when is a deal a deal and when is a loan a loan and under under what kind of pretense and marketing glitz that each of them may have and and to help them make sure they're making clearer decisions around, you know, deals and opportunities and money uh, and not sacrificing the the financials you know, or sacrificing feel and fit for a financial transaction, which can ultimately lead to big, a big mistake down the road. For sure, with it, without a doubt. But as you know, um, advisors at the end of our consulting process, economics is a big part of the conversation. And we, we talked about this a couple of days ago. We worked on this case together a little bit, but I've been working with a Merrill Lynch advisor about a million dollars in trailing 12 production. We explored probably five different firms together um, and he found an RIA that he was really, really interested in. It's one of the highest payout RIAs in the industry. And he loved the culture. He loved the technology. He really saw him being a part of that organization long term. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a, a, a leading broker dealer came out of left field and offered him close to $600,000 to make the, the transition over to his firm. And all of a sudden, the decision got you know very emotional. In his head, he started thinking about how he could pay off his house or how he could put a down payment on a potential you know vacation house. And some, as he went through the exploration of that firm, there was a couple things in there that really would have been non-starters for him. And all of a sudden, he started overlooking those things. So he basically just asked me to put on a piece of paper how taking that extra money up front would impact him long term. And we went over just a couple different scenarios that, that that I wrote down in a spreadsheet. So once again, this financial advisor, a million dollars in trailing 12 production, 
The firm was offering him $600,000 up front. I just assumed based off of the pro forma that I took a look at after the payout, after the fixed cost of being part of the broker dealer, admin fees, et cetera, that firm was going to be taking about 20% of his business off his top line revenue every single year. So we basically did three different scenarios over 10 years. So the first one was him not growing at all over that 10 years. So over that 10 year time period for this financial advisor to get $600,000 upfront on a bonus to transition, he was giving up over 10 years, $2 million of his top line revenue, um, that 20% haircut times 10 years. And he was really shocked by that number because by year three, this broker dealer was breaking even and continuing to make money. And this advisor was losing a significant amount of money um, for, the, for, the, for the next seven years of his note. But where it really started to blow the financial advisor's mind is where we started to add growth into that as well. So on the second scenario, once again, 10 years, taking 20% of his revenue every single year, uh, the broker dealer is, um, but considering a 5% growth rate, that $2 million went up to $2.8 million that he was losing, taking that $600,000 up front. And then we just did one more scenario um, of him assuming a 10 year, a 10% growth rate and at 10% growing every single year and that broker dealer taking that 20% haircut, $3.7 million he's leaving on the table for that $600,000. So that starts to, to, to look less and less attractive um, as that growth rate goes up. You know, it happens all the time. We see it. Advisors, you know, have come to us after making some of those bad decisions, you know, and they're three years into the firm. And we, you know, have those conversations around, why'd you go there, you know? And and when you peel it back, you know, and, and we've had advisors that we know that we're talking to actively that are evaluating XYZ firm because of that that highlight, that top line money, uh, you know, and, and as we all know, when it comes to, you know, really buying anything, you know, you can look at buying a car, you can look at buying any anything, you know, there's a price and then there's the real price. And, and it's the firms out there trying to advertise, you know, the deals, the incentives, the programs, et cetera. And then there's the real price that, that's buyer beware that you've got to understand and look behind the, the kind of underneath the, the, the covers there. And that's what happens in these scenarios. You know, I think the bigger scenario for that particular advisor is not just the money there on the table, but the non-starters that they would have been sacrificing. That's the three-year clock. You know, that's the stuff that's really more detrimental to the business and can really hurt someone when they're really looking at, you know, what happens over time. You know, these were non-starters and, and a lot of the valuation process that someone needs to go through is what are your non-starters and don't sacrifice those no matter how much somebody puts a check in front of you. Uh, you know, if it's a non-starter, it's a non-starter. You know, so I think the learning uh, related to the deal itself is to for an advisor to understand that whether you're looking at a wirehouse, an independent broker dealer, or even an RIA firm, there's the headline price, there's the headline deal, and then there's, you know, what's really being offered. Yeah. And, and that's a really, can be really dramatically different firm by firm, right? The other piece that I think is important to know is just understand from that firm who's offering you that money, their perspective, more often than not, they think of your business as about a two-year break even, maybe three years. And so if they're offering you 200% as a deal or 300% as a deal, right? Or even 100%, they're literally looking at that and say, hey, we're going to be profitable after what could be two or three years of you being here. And these deals are going to be seven or 10 or longer of them just being incredibly profitable. And we know while the deals themselves are seven years or 10 years, advisors don't typically even move in most cases at the end of that. They're there for what could be 10 or 15 years. And that's what you're seeing with the profitability and, and how much a firm may make off of a financial advisor. 
Yeah, so I just want to be clear on this podcast. There is absolutely nothing wrong with taking upfront capital to to make a transition. There is deferred comp a lot of times to be paid off. There is staff to be to be compensated for. There's there's office space. There's there's so many different things to pay for. I just That's feel like I just feel like it's really important to work through either by yourself or with someone like Bridgemark on a spreadsheet to figure out really what you're giving up over the length of that note for that money, you know, figure out the ways, you know, figure out exactly what you need from an upfront capital standpoint. And if it's not as much as the deal that they're offering, sometimes there's ways to negotiate maybe lower money up front. So it doesn't so negatively impact your ongoing economics um, as much as possible. And in the scenario that I was talking about before with the Merrill Lynch advisor, after showing him how much money he was giving up over the long run, he actually forego, he actually gave up any upfront economics to make sure that he was setting him up for maximum economics on the long term. So there's no right or wrong answer here. It's just working with somebody that can put it all on, on, on the same spreadsheet for you and make you understand what the trade-offs are. Really well said. Uh, you know, again, when we work with advisors, right, our clients in helping them go through this process and understanding this process, we we will always talk about feel fit and financials. Um, but that process is a lot of curation and evaluation. And that evaluation is a filtering where we, we can end up with two or three finalists in that evaluation process. And when you then compare two or three finalists, how do you differentiate? You know, there might be two firms and you like them both really well. You know, there's a, there's certain things about each of them you like better. And there's certain things about each of them you like worse. And so how do you distinguish? Well, a lot of times that can come down to economics. And we're, that's a perfectly smart decision for that to happen is the economics can break a tie. What we're, so we're not talking about utilizing economics, maximizing economics. Uh, it's about sacrificing economics is what you don't want to do. And it's also about understanding the economics because economics is money and money can come in different ways and different forms. There's forgivable deals, right? There's upfront cash, there's payout, there's fees, there's support. There's a lot of different components to, to the economics that you really want to look at it with, with uh, you know, kind of from a broad perspective. Perspective. Yeah, without a doubt. And 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 just for listeners to know, I have multiple videos on my YouTube channel and also my podcast talking about some of the different things that you can negotiate and talking about some of the different ways to to, to be able to maximize the, these economics as well. Everyone, I thought this was really helpful today, Jeff. Thank you so much for your time. If anyone has any questions at all about the topics that we covered today, or just in general about the broker dealer RIA marketplace. Uh, my contact information is right below in my podcast, and it is uh, right in the about section in my YouTube channel. Really, Corey, thanks for doing this. You know, uh, come to go look us up on the website, Bridgemark Strategies, where there's a lot of information, you know, from how we work with financial advisors, really trying to educate financial advisors in this space. Uh, and so, you know, for anyone who wants to learn more, your YouTube channel is phenomenal. We've got other information on our website at Bridgemark Strategies. Uh, and, you know, let us help you as you go through this process. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a great day.